Hello everyone, my name is Jay Mack and the show is called Inside Fine Art and we're on that channel.com. This evening I have two very creative guests, they're both artists. Their names are William Ho and Stephen Hall. I'd like to start with my first guest. His name is William Ho. He is a painter, a sculptor, a writer, an instructor, and a goodwill ambassador. His artwork appears in museums, galleries, and public arenas around the world. Welcome to the show, William. Thank you for your invitation, Jay. Well, it's so nice to have you. And perhaps we could uh, start with uh, a little bit about where you're from and uh, your background as far as your education uh, okay. is concerned. Sure. Now, actually, I, I was actually born in China and I was uh, brought to Hong Kong when I was one. I came here to Canada about 33 years ago. I was studying at the um, University of Waterloo on uh, fire arts, um, city planning, and then, and then political philosophy and international politics. Well, those doesn't look like they are blending very nicely at that time, but when I look back now, they all work very well. I think this is state of art and that combination too now. And did you, did you study painting then or fine arts along yes. the way? Uh, when, when did this happen? I, I, I studied um, artists always in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I started my first painting, well, I the first drawing in about four or five years old. And then I went into uh, oil painting. But when I, when I was about 10 years old, um, I uh, encountered a Chinese brush painting. And from then on, I, I fell in love with that. So up to now, I'm still doing a lot of Chinese brush painting. At the same time, I do other, uh, art with other media, particularly with uh, glass work, mm -hmm. with um, uh, casting the, uh, the glass, uh, lamb work, and, uh, and a combination of all different... Oh, I see. So you d it is a combination. It is because a combination. Uh, well, well, we'll take a look at your work, sure. and you can tell me uh, which part is cast okay. and which part is the lamp work that okay. you're working with and things okay. like that. So uh, we'll look at the first image that we have here. And um, it's up on the screen now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now this is uh, called Harmony and Hope. Yes. And it's from the, uh, at the AG on, uh, Art Gallery of Ontario. Yes. Perhaps you could tell me a little bit okay. about this show. Now, this is a special uh, display of my art. The painting is, was big. It was about almost like 40 feet long. Wow. And uh, there was, mm -hmm. uh, right now they, they put it outdoor, and uh, that was a few years ago. And uh, the painting was talking about the grapes. Using Chinese brush painting, very traditional way of expressing the Chinese art on grapes. And then the grapes, and uh, they're talking about how do we harmonize ourselves with nature and ourselves. And I think the message is we need to harmonize starting from ourselves and also harmonize with other people and harmonize with nature. I think it's also harmonized with the creator himself too. So um, that's why I'm, uh, I see that if we have harmony, we will have a lot of hope for the future. I see. Yes, and now how many uh, pieces did you have in this uh, show? This is a, this only one piece. Because one that piece, is, that this, is a, this huge is, piece. It's oh a no, big it's piece, a very about 40 feet long. Exactly. I didn't know whether <laughs> it was, um, you know, and actually a piece of artwork or somebody took it and blew it up. It's, it's amazingly it's large. It's yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And what was the material you used in this that one? That one was uh, Chinese, um, uh, Chinese uh, ink and Chinese paint. Oh, really? Yes. yes. And uh, what did you put some, something on it to protect it? Or? Yes, uh, they, they have something to uh, special coating to protect it, yeah. I see, yeah. okay. Well, we'll go on to the next image. And okay. um, this is called Hope in the Mist. Yes. And uh, this is one of your uh, paintings, paintings as well. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us something sure. about now that? Sure, now this one is, uh, is using a very special technique called splash paint. I basically splash the pink and the ink on a piece of paper <laughs> and let it dialogue with nature. And then I can see whether that will become um, a mountain or landscape or it can be the flower of different uh, uh, subject matters. But I let the nature take its course. So when you can see that, uh, you can see the mountain, you can see the, the, um, the, the mist, you can see some waterfall. Now the, uh, the, um, uh, the tangible part is more, it's not easy. 
mm-hmm. uh, to be expressed, but the intangible part is actually more, more difficult to express, what we call the space of imagination. In Chinese art, we ask you to see uh, more than what you look at, mm-hmm. and also to feel beyond what you see. Less is more. And then we want you to feel the special space of imagination. Mm-hmm. And uh, your, your, your titles are very inspirational. Is um, this part of the Chinese philosophy mm-hmm. in painting? Yes. Or because North Americans are not necessarily, uh, they um, don't have this attitude necessarily. Yes, I think because uh, in, the, in our life there are a lot of beast. Because when we are going through our journey of life, a lot of time there are a lot of uns- uncertainties there. Mm-hmm. And uh, because of the uncertainty, we almost see them as mist in the, in the surrounding. And uh, we, we, we want to see, even in the mist situation, we can still see the hope I see. in the difficulties. Mm-hmm. We want to see the best from the worst. We see hope in, even in disasters. And that is what we need, is a more positive. And that's, uh, that's on that probably mo- my own feelings to the world. Yeah. Oh, I see, that's beautiful. Well, we'll go on to the next piece, mm. and uh, this is um, this is called the light of hope. Now you can probably it's the same technique using uh, splash pink and ink, mm-hmm. and uh, the bottom part you can see a lot of dark ink there, representing the difficulties. This painting I was di- I, I was I was doing that for the stu- uh, the children with AIDS, particularly oh. in China, Africa, mm-hmm. India, even in Canada, and sometimes they have been considered burdens to the society, but they were actually haven't done anything wrong. Some of them actually was born with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with AIDS yes. uh, from, their, from their parents, and life it can be very difficult for them, and, uh, and, but I want to let them know that it can be like a, like a walk and mountain on their shoulders, mm-hmm. but I want them to see that light shining through, and I think that we want to let them know that it's light of hope. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, I have another question. Yes. There are seals and a signature. Exactly. Is there a a specific place to put them? Now, um, there are certain traditions uh, where to put what, but there are at least two different types of silk, a chop. One is the identity chop, which we have my first name or family name or or my uh, personal name. And also there's one called leisure stem that you put down your state of mind that when you did the painting, what was the state of mind? Were you very, very, a, a lot of anxiety, or a lot of anticipation, or, or you want the people to feel joy? Then we put the stem. Sometimes we make the stem, we engrave the stem while at that spawn, at that point, and then they put it on. Oh, I see. Oh, so yeah. you create the oh, stamp yeah. for the piece. Sometimes we in, do that. In certain cases. Yeah, so the stem itself is a state of art by itself. Oh, I see. And the way you put that, is the is the balance is the balance on how where do you put what or not to put what and that is the key i see now the balance is it yeah I, i'm looking at and saying is it a, a visual balance mm. now or it's, it's something else now there are this couple level there's a visual balance on the art mm-hmm. where do you put but it's also a poetic sense that when you put it in then there's we see painting almost like a poetry then you can visualize it you can, uh, you can also have it in your mind to understand or try to communicate something not doesn't, doesn't mean that to be reason, but feelings of the artist himself. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dialogue between you and the audience, not only visually, but also poetically. Oh, and I that see. is the key for Chinese art. Oh, yes. Well, we'll look at another piece, <laughs> and this is a very important piece for yeah. you. Yes, right. Now, this one is called the One Heartbeat. I finished this painting in one single stroke. Of course, it took about 40 years to practice first. Right now, this painting is talking about the heartbeat. I mean, you can probably see that it's like a, a heartbeat. And uh, it's talking about your heartbeat, my heartbeat, the heartbeat for the whole humanity. Right now, because we share the same heartbeat with the rest of the world as a global family. That's why if a child suffer in China or Haiti, we all suffer. If a child get hurt in India or Japan, we all get hurt. If a child die in America or in or Africa, part of us die too. Because we share the same heartbeat, we have to help one another. Now, when I was in the, at the United Nations, 
Uh, this, uh, when I was invited to have my show exhibition at the UN headquarters in New York, mm -hmm. this is one of the pieces that I saw, I, 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 I exhibited. And the United Nations family like it so much that they want me to use the message and this painting in different parts of the world. Now this painting, the first number one limited print is, hand, is right now installed at the UN headquarters in New York. I, see. I, I still keep the original. Mm -hmm. okay? And different cities of the world, like town of Richmond Hill in Canada, has become the one happy cities. And UN is the one happy global partners. And um, the idea is we were sharing this painting with the rest of the world with the message so that we can talk about the one happy movement around the world. So you might see actually uh, in the future um, the one happy t-shirt. Oh, yes. You yes. might see that uh, one day maybe 10,000 people wearing oh. the one happy t-shirt marching for noble causes, I for see. humanitarian grounds or for the protection of environment because we all share the same one heartbeat. Mm -hmm. That's why we, ha we all have to, um, uh, to put our hands on our chest. It's an invitation. If you still feel your heartbeat, my friend, that means you're still alive. Mm -hmm. That means you have the obligation and responsibility to help the rest of the world, to help your brothers and sisters in Haiti or in uh, Canada. So um, this is the invitation, of course. If you have no heartbeat, I cannot ask for more. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a privilege that is a journey from the heart to the will. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. All right. Well, we'll go to the next image. Okay. Which is your uh, the book that yes, you have right. here, and you brought the book in today. Sure. Now this is the book that um, um, is about the one heartbeat movement around the one heartbeat around the world movement, and you can see that I was doing a lot of book signing in different parts of the world. Oh yeah. Um, the book is called A Journey from the Heart to the World. Basically, I want, this is um, uh, the UN like the message so much and the arts so much that they want the rest of the world to uh, to um, to enjoy it. And um, and uh, my message is very simple: we have to give the best to the world, and the best is not how much we can get from the world, but how much we can offer from our heart. And um, I I want to give the same uh, invitation to the world that um, we can work together and make the world a better place. Oh, well, that's wonderful. And yes. uh, you have several images that you've uh, that are in this book. And did you do the writing as well? Yes, the, those uh, writings are actually part of my speeches. Mm -hmm. And I deliver my speech at the United Nations, talk about what art, beauty, and love and hope, and how do we cherish our lives wow. and, the, and the lives of others. Yes, and it's you, there are a lot of people here. And unfortunately, I couldn't show them, but there, there was one image that you sent me with Laura Bush. Oh, yes, with, uh, where, with, where with she Laura was, Bush, uh, yes, yes and friend. so she has one of your uh, yes, books. Yes, yes, she, I think she, um, she's humanitarian herself, and uh, she likes art. I'm sure that she likes my art, and uh, that's why we have some dialogue. We oh, some wonderful. Dialogue. We, 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 we work together if the situation is now, and uh, when, the, oh, when the situation uh, that I can see fit, then we can work together. I see. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, let's go on to the next image. Ah. And... Um, Oh, this yes. is an award that yes. you've uh, created. Yes. Uh, the United Nations, because they love the message and my, and my art so much, that they, they asked me, the, family, the United Nations family asked me to create an award that uh, will, um, will uh, deliver the message. The message is the One Happy Message. That's why this one is called the One Happy Award. And um, sometimes they give it to humanitarian like uh, Desmond Tutu. Uh, he just received it, I think, two years ago. And then the, the UN also gave it to uh, um, some other head of state. And uh, whoever they have contribution to the world, to make the world a better place, um, I, will, I will create one for them. Now, they, they, they look at it very seriously because this is not an award that can cast. Every time you can cast an like Oscar, uh, every time of uh, 50 pieces. This one is an award that is one of a kind. Because to me, life is the most beautiful masterpieces of art we can ever uh, embrace. So I see art is not alive, cannot be repeated, cannot be replaced. So every time I create a piece of art, this is the award. So they look at them not only as an award, but it's a piece of art. So that's why everyone's paying so, um, they take it so serious on this. Yes, award. no, uh, but they give this award uh, at other times, do at they? Um, yes. Um, so each time you create a new piece? Each time I create a new piece. 
Wow. Okay. Everyone is unique. As you and me, is, we are one of a kind and unique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fantastic. And uh, there were some other people in that. Can we show that image again? There were some other people in there, and you could tell me perhaps who okay. they are. Okay. Now, um, the um, of course, the, right, the top right hand, right hand corner was uh, me and uh, Ban Kim Moon himself. Now, and that, let me tell uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, he loved the prototype. That was a prototype he was holding. He said, Mr. Ho, uh, William is so beautiful. Can I have it now? And I said, no. <laughs> you know, of course, his chief of staff said, Mr. Ho, did you really say no to the Secretary General of the whole world? Not, not too many of us said no to him. But I said, no, because you deserve the best, uh, Mr. Bang, and uh, UN and the whole world deserve the best. And I cannot compromise my standard of my art. So you have to wait. Now, he's a, he's a beautiful human being. He understood that. He said, William, I wait, wait. Give me the best. Give the world the best. <laughs> So three months down the road, when you go to look at the bottom uh, photo, uh, yes. the president of the General Assembly of that year uh, held a uh, press conference at the United Nations headquarters, the press conference center, just like what we are doing now. Mm-hmm. And they said, announcing William Ho's my art piece will become the art piece for the UN occasions on those situations. Now the, way, the left way uh, con- uh, corner was when I was sharing my art and my message with the uh, Nobel Prize people, my f- some of friends, mm-hmm. the, 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 the peace laureates in Geneva. And uh, when I finished sharing, they said, Mr. Ho, bring your award. I said, why? They said, come, come. And I, when I bought it there, you saw the, you saw the, rim, the rainbow? This yes. is a real rainbow. Yes. Uh-huh. The whole Geneva was covered by the rainbow. And I, they said, take a photo. I said, okay. Then they took a photo. And they said, don't like the photos benching from my award. I said, I need to keep that one for, the, for my book. And uh, that is a uh, different, diff- and I was speaking at the United Nations on different occasion, and there the small, small sculpture there is a, well, it's not a small one, it's a 40 feet long metal sculpture. Yes, that was, uh, it's really difficult, I think, to see <laughs> it there, but and I was, it's, it's I was wondering bit. where, you know, where it was, and I was asking you yes, earlier. Right, yes, right. Well, I think we should go on now yes. to um, another image. Okay. And... Um, this is the this is the real award. This yeah. is this is one happy the, award. Yes, this is the heartbeat award. Yep. and uh, it's it's made from glass. Yes, it took about usually about thirteen hundred degree and depends on the type of glass uh, material, and uh, you only have three seconds to create the move. Mm-hmm. Three seconds, and then it will fi- it will it will fix. So if you do not do the right way, you have to start all over again. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I can't imagine doing it myself. <laughs> it's a state of art by itself. <laughs> it, yes. it, 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 I know. It, it, it'd be very, uh, I'm sure it's very difficult. We'll look at the next image. Yes. And this is another piece of your uh, yeah. work. Yeah. It's, uh, it's also this. Maybe and it's the celebration of life. Yes. Yeah, celebration of life is like always uh, elevating, pointing upward. Yeah. Yes, and and you do um, casting and flame work. Is that it? Yes. Uh, there are three types of glass work. At least uh, the casting. Uh, 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 glass blowing and also uh, lamp work. Mm-hmm. And this sometimes it can be a combination of three, or sometimes it can be one of one type of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, we'll go. We I think we have uh, oh. we have one more image here. Sure. Now this is an award that I create for the um, uh, another um, United Nations family member uh, organization. It's called it's a renewable energy session that um, talk about renewable energy. And you can see the different color there and representing different type of energy source like uh, solar energy, mm-hmm. wind power or bio, bio uh, uh, fuels and also um, different type of energy. And then I'm trying to tell people that we can mix them, we can merge them together so that we can, do, uh, we can create clean energy so that our world will not be polluted. Otherwise, uh, we are killing ourselves, and that is not good. Oh, yes. That, mm-hmm. that and I noticed you had a maquette mm-hmm. on, y- on your website as well, and I like the maquette. It was a little bit different. Oh, yes, right. Uh-huh. Yes. But, uh, Everyone is unique. Right? Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's w- it was wonderful. Okay, well, I think we should move on to the yes. next image. Okay. And um, uh, this is a very interesting piece because it's basically it's a triplet. And there's a few pieces together, and uh, we talk about this one. They call eternity and uh, and the history. Talking about uh, it's from no beginning to top to no beginning uh, to no ending to the bottom, and 
horizontally, you can see a perspective of human history, and you can see the um, uh, fingerprints of the nature and the creator, and also fingerprints of human beings. So you can see the like um, uh, the uh, Great Wall of Chinese, and some of other big buildings from uh, from uh, in uh, in Greek, and some buildings in France and Egypt. Those are human fingerprints. But you can also see the waterfall of the Niagara Fall. And you, you will see, if you look at it carefully, you will see about 35 to 40 different symbols, like, uh, like E equal to M, uh, CM, CM square, and uh, like the famous uh, uh, theory from Einstein. So there are a lot of different symbols there. I leave it to your space of imagination when you go over to take a look at it. Oh, but you can come to the one gallery to look at them. Oh, in, uh, it, it, in, this, in is, this is at the Main one Street. gallery, at your gallery. Yeah, in Main so Street Unionville. And you, Main Street Unionville. And this is quite a large piece. This is a large piece, about uh, 14 feet long. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it, it's yes. very big. Well, maybe we should go on yeah. to the next piece. Now, this is a much more traditional Chinese mm -hmm. glass painting. You can see about five da 500 flowers there. Each flower, you take a few, you feel one, two seconds to finish it. So um, there are lots of, uh, this art has about 2,500 years history. And then we are expressing that in, uh, in a very simple way. Uh, in Chinese art, is uh, less is more. Yes. That is the, what the, um, the modern society need to learn. We don't want to always drive a grow, grow, grow in the wrong way. Now you, the same. yes, now you teach. Yes. Chinese I, art, do yes, you? Yes, I, I teach at the World Ontario Museum. Yes. I teach at the Museum of Civilization uh, some time ago and in Ottawa. I teach in different parts of the world. And uh, I also teach at my, uh, muse uh, my uh, gallery in uh, uh, Main Street, Unionville. Yes. yes. You, oh, you have ca classes there. Yes, I have now classes. Now, how, how long are your classes? Well, the classes uh, are usually about one and a half hours uh, mm -hmm. each, but uh, it's ongoing. You can learn, some of my students have been with me 10, 15 years. Oh, I see. Uh, and the mm -hmm. students are ranging from 7 years old to uh, 93 years old. Uh, 93 years old, she so has been learning painting 60 years before she t come to uh, learn under me. So we are, you're all well within that range. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody can, if they yes. want to, they can go to your website go to my and website. contact you and yeah. uh, to take your classes. Now you can go to my website, www oneheartbeat.ca or www.theonegallery.ca uh, you can get my contact there. okay well yes. I'm it's amazing well we'll go and we'll look at one more uh, okay now here. this one is called light of hope number uh, three mm -hmm. and uh, this one is talk about similar to the first one the light of hope you can see the splash pink and ink on on on, on the top and uh, this, the light is all actually from almost like strife food from the heaven to earth, touch the heart of the mm. suffering children of the world. Now, this is uh, one painting, but when you look at it on the horizontal way, this is the same painting, this becomes another painting called Creation. Oh, really? You can actually see the stardust on the left-hand side and the galaxy and the, and the, um, the, um, the whole universe there. And then when they move on the right hand side, you can see the valley and the mountains, they, form, they formalize that. Mm -hmm. So you can see the creation of the world. So my point is, we can see art and our life in different perspectives, and we will see something very, very interesting meanings and feelings at the same time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we'll go on to another uh, yes, right. piece, and uh, this is... This is a newer piece, is it? Yeah. Now this is a special piece that, that I use uh, special paint and ink techniques too. You can see the, some of the mountains there. At the same time, you can also see something beyond the mountains. Behind or above, you can see a rainbow. I finished the rainbow in one single stroke. Of course, it takes some time to practice because there are seven colors there. But at the same time, we also see um, a mat I would say I mean, um, a metric physical feelings of who you are. I leave that part to you to feel it, because I think my last job, the least I want to do is to dictate mm -hmm. how you see, but I can suggest how which direction you can go. But I leave it to the audience because you all of you are one of a kind. I see. Yes. All right. We'll look at the next one. Now this one is called dialogue. It's a dialogue between different, different galaxies. 
different human mind. And I use the same, uh, a very specific technique called uh, it's, it's a special type of splash pink and ink. And then I let it move forward and backward and let it express itself to manifest the dialogue between different um, physical and metaphysical world. And the tangible intangible is almost between um, the, um, the uh, uh, um, abstract and realism. Yes. Yes, a mm -hmm. lot of different mm -hmm. things there. I want to leave it to the art, the uh, audience, to become the artist. To I feel see. The journey. Now, how, how, what's the size of this? And this one is about uh, four feet by uh, two and a half feet. Mm -hmm. When you come to the gallery, that this particular piece is right now in the gallery, in the one gallery in uh, Main Street Unionville. I see. And, and, and is this on rice paper? This is on rice paper. Uh, Chinese ink and Chinese paint on rice paper. I have a whole series of this particular uh, 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 subject matter is the, um, the galaxy and the dialogue. Yeah. I see. Well, we'll, we'll look at one more. <laughs> now, this one has a special story. Uh, this one is uh, called Light of, Light of the World. And when I created that painting, I was actually intent to uh, create a landscape. And then when I finished the painting, my daughter, she actually happened to be here today, that she passed by and said, Daddy, did you, did you actually create the goal, the map of the world? Then I realized that I actually created the world. You did? Yes. yes. Like that's that. a, well, that's I thought it was intentional. It exactly, wasn't. That, but that was a, a, dis a little bit distorted world uh -huh. because the world is distorted, distressed it because too many people suffer. Too many people die with no reasons. Yes. So I was trying to tell people that even the world is suffering, there's still lights of hope shining from the bottom, from the top of the world, from the Creator to let us know that we still have hope. If we put our love into actions now, the world will still have hope. Uh, that part is, uh, is the passion in my heart mm -hmm. that's, uh, that we, we, all, we all have to share the same one heartbeat as a global family. Remember, you and me, we are one of a kind, and we are the most beautiful masterpiece of art, you know, in this world we can ever embrace. So I see art as life, and life as art. Yes. Well, now you have uh, some, some things coming up. Can yes, you right. tell me uh, what's, uh, okay. what, what you're doing next? Now, we are having the um, uh, I, I'm doing a lot of, uh, occasionally I'm doing a lot of painting on site in uh, Main Street Unionville because uh, in that area used to be a group of seven. Some friends were mm -hmm. living there and then they did paintings there. And, uh, but the tradition start to fade out, actually it's lost already. And there are many friends, uh, including many of the officials and uh, artists, lo art lovers, ask, Mr. Ho, can you go to, can you, can you do painting on site in your, in your gallery? so that we can revive this tradition. I said, I, that's what I'm going to do. That's why they put it down. It's called Renaissance at one. That means I'm going to do occasionally um, painting on site so that people can actually come into the gallery to see uh, the journey of creation. I want you and me become part of the journey that we can experience. And I always think there's a, um, that, that you're not actually the um, to want to start another place, they put down uh, my art called Art of Ways. And then the other thing they put down is myself become the art. And I, I believe that you and me are the most beautiful masterpieces of art. And I love to see that you and me will put the passion of art into our heart. And then the beautiful masterpieces in your space, in your room, in your house, in your mm -hmm. company. I think we can make the world a little bit better. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. Yeah. Now, uh, where can uh, people, you have several websites, could yes. you just tell me sure. what they are so people can uh, now, look them up? If you want to see more of my art in different parts of the world, please go to www.oneheartbeat, O-N-E-H-E-A-R-T-B-E-A-T dot C-A. And if you want to see my work, particularly in Canada, you can come to the, uh, um, the website, um, uh, the one gallery dot ca okay and uh, you, if you want to see some of my other work uh, I think those two places would be best place or if you want to see the real thing uh, come to the uh, the one gallery in the Main Street Unionville 
139 Main Street Unionville in uh, in uh, Highway 7 between Warden and uh, Kennedy. And I will have some other national and international art program using art and relief work to help the people, suffering people of the world. Um, and uh, later on this year, come uh, look at my website and then uh, you'll be news, see newspapers and TV and they will, and particularly the, 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 that TV, that <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will announce more about <laughs> what I'm doing for, for the world and uh, uh, for art and relief work. Oh, well, that's wonderful. And uh, we have to keep in touch yes, and watch definitely. and um, look at your websites. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was an honor having you. It's, uh, it's a privilege for me to come to you. And uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Inside Fine Art on thatchannel.com. My name is Jay Mack, and I have my second guest with me. His name is Stephen Hall, and he is a mixed media artist, and he shows his work across Canada and in the U.S. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thanks very much, Jay. Now, I understand you uh, are from Canada originally. <clears throat> yes, I'm from a very small town in Ontario. I'm a small town boy. Uh, I'm from a place called Johnstown. Oh, where's that? Yes, that's what everyone <laughs> asks. It's about 300 people, and uh, it's near Brockville, Ontario, which okay. is right on the St. Lawrence River. So we have lots of meadows and pastures and uh, bucolic farmland. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Yes, As for yes. a child, isn't it great? I, I didn't think so at the time. Oh, I see. Okay. I imagine when you were a teenager, it didn't. Yeah. It's it did? It, no, not, not so much, right? Yeah. I was really <laughs> okay. aching to get out of my small town. I'm, yes. like a, I, I'm just very much situated to being a city boy. Uh, so I kind of just dreamed my entire childhood away, dreaming to, of being somewhere else. I see. That's kind of how that went. And, so, and then you went to university in Montreal. I w that's right. I went to Concordia University where I studied film. So I, um, I became really interested in theater and photography and then that progressed to film. And so I went specifically to become uh, a producer, a director or an editor in film. Uh, and so I made, I made some short films and won a bunch of awards there. Uh, and then eventually ended up uh, working in music videos and then working in television. I became a promo producer here in Chum. Oh, really? A city TV was it, or That's, well, or it was a Chum. TV? It was oh, a Chum. At Chum. At Chum. So, so I worked in a couple of different channels at Chum. Uh huh. And then CTV bought us out. Oh, I see. Okay. And then that so that takes us basically up to about three years ago. I was working as a promo producer, making uh, a lot of television commercials uh, for shows, trying to get people to watch uh, shows that I wouldn't uh, uh, tell my friends to watch. So I decided that I wanted to get out mm -hmm. of um, promo producing. And I decided to, uh, it, so the question became, what will I do? And so I kind of looked back to my childhood um, where I was, I was always very interested in art and I decided to leave my job, you know, my well-paying you know, job. Oh, yes. And, oh. Uh, and take on becoming an artist full time. Uh, so up until that point, I had been doing art part time mm -hmm. on the side after work, you know, on the weekends and when I could. Um, and I had a few shows here and there. And at that point previously, I guess I would have been in the arts community as a visual um, video artist, mm -hmm. uh, but I decided to yeah, just kind of launch, jump off the diving board and become uh, you know, a, a full-time painter and photographer. Oh, fantastic. So that was a big risk for me, yeah. Oh, it, oh definitely. Well, let's take a look at your first piece here. We have cool. a, a piece here and it's called Reservoir, and yeah. tell me about it. Sure. Well, you've chosen this piece. It's one of the first pieces I did. Um, so uh, I can maybe start by saying that my art has always kind of been, I've been more interested in kind of exploring themes of violence and, and different kinds of things as we'll see later in my portraits. But right, but it's, so it's interesting that I got involved in landscapes and this pertains to this particular piece. This piece is taken in Brockville, which is where um, my parents lived. And what was happening around this time is both my parents suddenly became very sick. Oh. 
And so this landscape this and this whole area, which I hadn't really been drawn to previously as a child, as I had kind of mentioned, um, when I went back to visit my mom and my dad when they were both unwell, um, suddenly this whole kind of, every, all the landscape, I was looking out the window, driving, you know, down the roads with, in the car, and I just suddenly became really drawn to the skies and the meadows and the fields. And this is an old pond in Brockville, and uh, it's, you know, down this old dirt road. And so I just started to go around to all these places that I visited when I was a child and start to document them and not having any real notion as to what I was going to do with the material. Uh, and I just started playing with it. Um, and so my process is photography that I mount onto boards and then I distress the work. Um, I scratch it up. Uh, I just really kind of like play with the surface. I paint onto the surface. I, um, and there's, there's inks, acrylics, oil paints, um, uh, charcoal. Uh, oh, really? All, all kinds. And uh, I missed something in there. Yeah, but um, all kinds of things on the top um, to create a built up uh, sort of visual uh, play that draws us kind of further and further away from the fact that it's originally a photograph. So uh, yeah. I'm trying to kind of create something else. No, that's, uh, that is, well, you create a lot of depth with that. Oh, and thanks. then it's a very ethereal quality to these, right. to these pieces. So, well, let's take a look at um, another one. And uh, Gleaming Pole, and this is from 2008 as well. So great. This is, um, so on my way back to Brockville to visit my mom and dad, I would, always t I would take the train. And so this was actually taken from the, I sort of took a lot of my photographs from the train window. Oh, did you really? Including this one, uh -huh. where I got kind of interested in the fact that there was an interplay between this moving landscape and the window of the train. So this big gleam, this big glow, and all of that kind of, uh, all those reflections and little lights, that's all caught in the window of mm. the sun hitting the window. Oh, uh, I see. Oh, okay. Now I understand right. what it is, of course. So that's all occurring in the camera. Uh huh. That's and now, what kind of camera do you use? Uh, when I was started off, so I, I, of course, I was originally a 35 millimeter, but this is now digital. Uh, this would have been a Canon 20D, which a is Canon. All right. Yeah, yes. Canon, Canon all the way yes. for me. And uh -huh. I now have a Canon 5D, which mm -hmm. is like a pretty sweet camera. All right. Well, let's go on to the next, the next piece. And this is amazing, and I believe I've shown this piece you have. on yes before, because I had your dealer here, and I this was one of the images that we showed. Oh, you were talking yours. to Jay from Muse Jay, Gallery. Jay, yes, from the Muse Gallery. Oh, that's great. Well, this um, is getting a little bit um, kind of bigger, like the, it kind of has an expansiveness to it, mm -hmm. um, and I really. Um, wanted to explore that sense of epicness. You know, there's that giant kind of plume in the background, um, and there's a lot of depth uh, sort of in the foreground, all kind of like, kind of creating some kind of spectacle. And so I'm interested in the idea of, like, like it, when I look at that, I see that there's kind of a merger between my interest in cinema. There seems to be, like the cloud seems to be growing, there seems to be movement for me, and I really want to capture that sense of wonder and movement um, and spectacle. It's sort of like, um, it's kind of like how we have this collect, as human beings perhaps, we have this collective response to nature and the, and the majesty or the drama of nature. And so for me, that's what I see when I was working on this, what, what I was trying to bring out and, and what I was found to be capturing what I was capturing. Oh, this. yes. Well, I, I remember talking about the, the, the clouds. They're amazing. Cool. That I've, I've never seen them like that. It, it's really quite, I agree. So here I am. So it's, it's like sometimes I'm out there uh, in Brockville, and it's just like sometimes the cl there's no clouds, and it's like, or they're wispy. But in this particular, a number of occasions, but this particular occasion, it was like magnificent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just incredible. Yeah. No, I, I, I just remember this piece. All right, let's go on to the next one. 
And winter? This is called winter tree. A winter tree. It's good. And um, it's actually in the backyard of where my mom lived. And oh, we really? Watching Jeopardy one night, my mother said, <laughs> you know, that tree back there looks pretty cool, Stephen. Get your camera. You should go take a picture of it. And so I guess the lesson there is to always listen to mom. I went back and, and took this picture. Uh, yeah, it's just a magnificent tree, uh, I think. And uh, uh, yeah, I love the way the branches uh, have kind of become this tangle. I like that when you can't really tell, when you first look at some of my images, and this one is a good example, that you like where, like there's a kind of a, a haziness or a, a fuzziness to it um, where some of the branches kind of get lost. And you used the word, I think, ephemeral before. Yeah. And so yeah. it kind of creates that dreamy quality. Yes, definitely. Well, we'll take a look at the next image and um, hallucination. Cool. This is called Hallucination. Uh, this is at the base of um, Niagara Falls. Oh, uh, is it really? So I was there I was a couple wondering. of years ago with my friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see like these boulders. These are all boulders at the base of Niagara Falls. Um, and when you look there, you can see that if you really look at this piece, on the right hand lower corner, you can see there are birds flying around. Oh, okay. Which suddenly gives you a sense of the scale of this, you know, it's this giant waterfall, of course, it's Niagara Falls, and at the base there are all these birds hovering around, these rocks getting caught up in the wind. And so I call it hallucination because you, because it's hard to get the feeling at first that, there are, that it's that big, right? And it kind of feels like, again, like a dream. Yes, well, I was, I was trying to figure out if you, I didn't realize necessarily that it was Niagara Falls, and I, you can see that now. I didn't know whether you did that when you were working on it, you know, scrubbing away at... Uh, now, you, you work on, on... You put your work on wood panels. Do you... That's right. You take it from film to uh, paper. So, yeah, so the, the, right, the exact process, I'll take the picture. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes there'll be distortions in the actual image, like when I take pictures through the glass, or I've taken pictures through sunglasses, or tried to reflect the sun back into the lens. So I can create some kind of like effects right from the camera. I'll print that, put it onto a hard panel so that it's on a hard surface. And then that's when I start to work on it. Oh, I see. So you, sometimes, because I did hear that you, you photograph and, and then some you photograph it again and that's repeat right. it oh, great. So until yeah. you get the image that you're, you want. Right. So like uh -huh. a lot of these are starting off very small, like say 10 inches by 10 inches. Yeah. So... Um, and then I'll, so I'll work up that surface. And it's interesting because uh, if you think about something that's only this small, um, uh, if you do gestural kind of work on it and start painting on it, your gestures are a certain a relationship to your body size. Mm -hmm. So at this size, you can do these kinds of motions, but it, when you expand that, so if I'll take a picture of that and then blow it up, this is particular piece is 60 inches by 60 inches. Mm -hmm. um, the gestures suddenly uh, become gigantic so uh, they look a little bit um, otherworldly like it, yeah. you can't really make those gestures at that size right so I think that's really interesting that that work uh, has this element to it it's made small and then enlarged and there's so there's something a little bit off about the gestures but I like that yes yes well I think they work well look at the next one cool. and uh, this one is Distance, is That's it called? Right. And it's from 2010. So this is with uh, your contemporary camera now. Is so it? at this point, that's right. It's yes. with the 5D now. Uh -huh. And at this point, I've started to take um, f a multiple photographs and mm -hmm. then stitch them together. I see. Okay. So and that's the... It creates... Gave it that quality. Yes. It cre yeah, I uh -huh. guess. And it creates um, this kind of uh, more of a vista, I guess. More, yeah, more yeah, of a it panoramic. Does. Uh -huh. And I can capture little details in, in the work, like there's a little farmhouse on the left there with an aerial. And, um, and so I, what I really like is that when you walk up to my pieces, uh, you can start to see little figures and little details. Sometimes you can see little cars that you wouldn't notice at, the, at, the, at first from just looking at it. It's like you're overwhelmed by, or whatever, like there's, there's big skies and so on. So you don't notice at first at least I don't, you know what I mean? So little cars and stuff Yeah, like that. all the details that you all have that stuff, in it. Right, which I think exactly. is really fun. And yeah. because I've taken it with multiple shots, um, uh, the, the, there's a lot of uh, clarity 
right? Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. of that stuff really blows up well. Yeah. So you can walk right, kind right. of into it. Yeah, well, oh, yes. Now let's, let's go to the next one. And now this is your figurative work. And this is Jim Cuddy. So I actually started with figurative work. So the landscape stuff mm -hmm. came after. So I was, I was a painter first and you know, a photographer. And then everything kind of got kind of put together into my multimedia work. So this took, this, I did this recently, last summer, uh, and uh, for a TV show called Star Portraits. Uh, this is, in fact, Jim Cuddy from the band Blue Rodeo. Yes. Now, um, you are there with two other artists. And you're competing to do this portrait. That's right. So it was really fun. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, it's a show called Star Portraits. And, uh, yeah, uh, just like you said, um, so there was a lot of um, suspense around oh, this Oh, I can imagine. Process. Yes. Um, and it was really great. Um, so we all had about five minutes each to take the photograph which we were going to work from. Oh, you took a photograph that you were going to work from because so, I, some of them don't they just paint right away or they, No, I, I don't I don't I'm not sure but I don't think so. I uh, think everyone is um, able to sketch. So we're in the room while let's say the celebrity is getting in this case Jim Cuddy is getting interviewed uh -huh. uh, by the host and uh, we're all able at that point to take our sketchbooks out and start sketching him. Um, but then at the end, I think most people work from the actual documentation. Oh, I see. So they, they got the but it, th this is just for show? <laughs> kind of. Maybe yeah. a little practice. Yeah, I don't okay. know if anybody actually used right. it. But this, it was fun. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, we let the cat out of the bag or something like that. I, 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 got, I got him to, exactly, <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. I got him to stand up and start yelling at me. I wanted to, him to get really animated. Oh, yeah. And so I said, would you do something for me? Would you stand up and uh, pretend that there's uh -huh. a monster behind me, some really <laughs> big monster, and I want you to yell. Uh, at this monster, and I, because of what I wanted him to do is get really animated, uh, and he said, "Sure, I'll do that." And uh, he started to get, you know, yelling and yelling. And I said, "I want you to yell these five times." And and so while he was doing that, I was taking these pictures. So he was actually yelling there, um, but um, when I was painting it, I decided that it really also looks like he's singing, right? It does. And yes, so I thought that's what you, that's what he was doing. Actually. Great. Yeah. yeah. No. And he said, which was really a compliment, he said when he, well, he chose mine, right? So I was, Well, that's he wonderful. Mine, so he great. has it in his collection. Supposedly correct? he has it somewhere, yep, yep. in his home somewhere, yes. perhaps, right? And he said to me, he said, the, one of the reasons that I really respond to this piece and why I'm choosing it is uh, because it's like you've caught me in a moment where I'm not, you know, in the past, I'm not in the future. I'm, I'm caught in the present, uh, engaged in what I'm doing. Yes. And uh, I'm engaged in the moment. And I thought that was really a compliment. Oh, yes. Well, I think it works I, very well. I mean, as yeah. an artist, that's what we're all looking for. Oh, yes. To be no. in this thing called the flow, right? You uh -huh. want to be in the moment. And then. No, no, that works very well. Uh, well. We'll show you. We've got one more. Cool. And Wounded Raphael. So this is part of a larger series called My Wounded Series. Uh-huh. And uh, so I've taken a variety of um, uh, images of, of, of men and put makeup on them. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, you know, red bloody makeup. And I'm really interested in exploring um, the themes of, you know, wounds and how we're all scarred as we go through our lives. Um, that, you, that if we're kind of up to something in our life, uh, we've taken on conflicts and we've, uh, we, we've come out of it kind of battle weary, right? So mm -hmm. we've got some kind of, in this case, kind of a representation of that battle for me is, these, is this blood and these wounds. Um, and I, I became interested in kind of this also, I think it's kind of like a way of talking about myth, the myth of the hero. Like there is um, something Joseph Campbell talks about and how we, how societies get collectivized through storytelling and how mm -hmm. the stories are about a hero and what the hero does and the journey the hero goes on and the battles and so on mm -hmm. that he uh, has um, to kind of get to ethics, to talk about morals, to talk about how people could construct their life, right, and, and what to do in mm -hmm. life. And so this is for me also a kind of a nod to Joseph Campbell because it explores um, these mythic heroic figures, these masculine men that are dealing with, um, you know, these assaults, these, but, but yeah. coming out um, uh, either victorious being caught in a moment, but also being caught in a moment of vulnerability. So mm -hmm. they're taking it on, but 
you know, they're also putting up, they have to put up a, 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 a fight. And in that fight, there's doubt. Yes. Uh, there's, uh, there's conflict. There's mm-hmm. drama, right? Well, that I'm sure I'd, I'd love to see the rest of the series oh, or awesome. some of the other pe- pieces. Yes. All right, let's go to the next one now. This you have a show coming up. I do, and so this is um, this is one of the pieces in my show coming mm-hmm. up at Muse Gallery. Uh, it opens on June seventeenth, which is next Friday, and a fast approaching. And um, this is the largest piece I've ever done. Uh, it's called Burnt Offering, and the size is sixty inches by seventy two. Um, and so you c- the show is called and the show is called Horizon. Mm-hmm. So you can see here this very clear horizon line. And I, as I look over my work, I've started to notice that I seem to be attracted to this straight, very uh, crisp horizon line in the distance. And I started to be, and, I, and when I'm working on my pieces, I'm also very interested in how parts of them become abstracted. Mm-hmm. So uh, like there's kind of color fields. So there's this big color field above the line and a color field below the line. Yes. And in this case, there's even a color field kind of along the line where that orange is coming out. Yes. Well, you you inserted that orange, though, did you not? Or was it uh, there? No, no, that's uh, that's the sun coming up at some oh, really? hour oh, amazing. in the morning. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's um, it, it looked to me like because um, the sun is so red and kind of on fire. Um, I called it burnt offering as kind of a what what kind of came to me is this idea of how s- at a certain point in time we worship nature like society communities oh, yes. would worship well, nature. Well, yes, because we don't see it. <laughs> That's right. But now it's all hidden in the buildings in and whatnot. The, I know. <laughs> at least if we're in Toronto or New York or someplace like that. Yes. Yeah, it's tr- absolutely true. Uh-huh. And so yeah, this is a clear ob- unobstructed view of nature. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh where where you're right. I mean, there is so this could be back, I don't know, a thousand years I suppose. There's no indication it couldn't be. Um particularly I mean from the vista. Um so I kind of got the sense of that largeness, you know, mm-hmm. like that I mean, at one point and maybe it's true that we believe that, you know, like there's this power in the sky I and mean, God's that, that nature is God's, right? And so burnt offering is kind of like the sacrifice to the gods, right? And, yeah. But it's it's more like an appreciation, like uh, uh, to to nature, to the beauty, the magnificence, the the splendor and power, right, of nature. And yeah. I really saw that in this piece. Yes. No, it's amazing. Well, let's look at another one of your nature pieces. Cool. It's called Autumn Pond, and this is again, interestingly enough, coming back full circle to the big, to the very first piece we saw, which was called Reservoir. This is the same pond exactly in Brockville. Oh, is it really? On that old dirt road. Amazing. Uh, and, but this is a little bit further on, so you can kind of see that this has developed into um, a, a, a slightly. It's evolved. The, the the visual vocabulary has evolved. And, and so I'm excited to see that when I look at these pieces. And it just comes from, you know, like being in the studio and, and, and working on these and pieces and developing them, yeah. my technique. Um, and so, yeah, I see, I see there's um, just, I, I've kind of gotten more confident with the way I'm interplaying with my materials, you yeah. know, with the paints, and bringing out the light. Well, they, the, this color works really well. Thank you. Now let's go to the next cool. piece. And uh, last, last Light. This is called Last Light. Uh, th- now, I've kind of wandered away from Brockville. I've taken this piece in Halifax, but it's a, t- uh, you know, I rented a car with a friend and we drove uh, around Halifax, uh, around Nova Scotia. And, uh, and this is this beautiful time of day, right? It's twilight, sun's going down. Um, and it was just hitting that grass at the front and hitting mm. the clouds. And you can see the, the shadows later in the day because of where that waterway is on the bottom right is in shadow. And so it's just, just this kind of perfect point is, in time. It does work and you get a really a lovely feeling of depth, uh, depth of field within the, within the photograph. Uh, well, cool. Do you want me to go back to it? Or? Sure, let's go back for a moment. I just wanted to point out the road on the side mm-hmm. um, just as an because in maybe not all of the pieces that we've looked at so far, but I'm interested in including a little piece of 
civilization. I see. In 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 the pieces, sometimes hidden. In this case, you know, you might not see it at first, but of course, it's right there on the side. And kind of like there's a there's something interesting to me about the way there's a collision kind of between nature between and nature civilization. and man is infringing on nature in a sense. Then. Yeah, de- yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Cool. This is called Close at Hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, for me, the, it's, it has a sort of moodiness to it that I get caught up in. Uh, I find um, that I'm kind of swimming in, in this somber mood. But like the um, earlier piece called Arrival, where the clouds are like mm-hmm. kind of like, they feel like they're in motion. And again, going back to um, my interest in cinema and super, in Super 8 film. Oh, and yes. This, I, do, you know, these I know. flares and scratches, right? Yes. Well, that, but you did use Super 8, did you not? Or in some of your pieces or not? Not in, not in my, these pieces. Not I, in these I've pieces, shot but prior to that. I've shot Super 8 before. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. That I've shown at festivals and whatnot. I see. And so, okay. Um, and of course, Super 8 films are the stuff that, that uh, you know, all of my childhood memories are captured Yeah, on, right? of course. Yes. So, so for me, I think that aesthetic is really uh-huh. coming out in, in my work, I, the, in this all of this quality, work. This quality that you got with that camera is coming with, with I, your contemporary cameras today. That's right. It's yes. interesting that, you know, like we see, I think, repeatedly in history and in design and in the history of art, that things that at one point were um, like... Uh, an error, like mm-hmm. the scratches on Super 8, later on become an aesthetic that's desired. Yeah. So, so uh, then people are, are like, you know, like jeans. Now we get jeans, we buy them oh, ripped, ripped, right? Yes. Or like fonts. Like we used to hate like the bitty area around a font, but now that's become an aesthetic. So it's interesting when the errors of the past become, you know, something cool and contemporary and desired. Yes. In the, in the, you know, in, 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 this, in a contemporary. Uh, Oh yeah, you can right? see it. You can see it everywhere. Okay, we've got another one here. This is called Elevation, and I I like this piece because it, it's kind of exploring more of the color fields that so like so you can see again that there's a strong horizon line mm-hmm. uh, with this very rich um, uh, sky color of the sky. This is taken out of a window as well, so we're getting. A similar effect, the sun's hitting this glass. Yeah, you get this feeling that you're in a car, driving along, or oh, as cool. you say, a, a, a train or something like that. And in this case, it's a boat. It's a boat, is it? Okay. It's a giant boat I'm on. Oh, well, that's nice. Hey. And, um, <laughs> yeah, that is nice. Um, and yeah, just at the end of the day, again, catching the... So the light's, of course, always important, right? So at mm-hmm. the end of the day, this, this magnificent, this brilliant, bright... Over, kind of overexposed sun is like sitting in the sky, just like blasting its rays through the window. And I just felt really um, um, seduced over to the window and grabbed my camera, of course, and started taking these shots. And I like the interplay, right? So it's not just me shooting the sky and the sun, it's me shooting through the glass of this man made object oh, yes. at the sun. Yes. And what that that effect, there's an effect Mm -hmm. there, right? Mm -hmm. That that wouldn't be produced otherwise. Yes, well, we'll look at another one. Great, so this is a good one to follow up with because again, we can see this exploration that I've started to feel more comfortable with um, in terms of the abstraction of the sky. And so if you, you know, if if you cut off the clouds, it's like what's going on up there, right? It's just this kind of green field. Mm -hmm. It it starts to make me, you know, I always really like Mark Rothko, who is an abstract, uh, yes, expressionist yes, who yeah. uh, paints in these color fields, right? Yes. And I started thinking, wow, like in, in a way, like there's three kind of fields there, right? There's the top, which is green. Then there's the, the white kind of yellow clouds. And then there's the, the water at the yeah. bottom. And so it's sort of like three separate planes of, of color or content. Yes. No, it works very well. Cool. And then we'll go to the next one. Awesome. We're back in um, Nova Scotia. Oh, we're in, Bo- in Nova Scotia now, are we? And uh, this, my friend who I was driving around with that day said, I want to take you to where I have this home that I've always dreamed of living in. And we drove up and this is the home that he secretly wants. So one day we win the lottery, we'll buy it. Um, or he, maybe oh, okay. he'll buy it. Um, but, um, <laughs> Can I visit? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. It's pretty amazing looking. Uh-huh. Like it really looked, you know, like 
this amazing field right? uh -huh. all, all around this little home. And if you look right close there, you can see the there's like a, a house and a little car and the driveway and the fence. And there's um, some smoke coming up. You, there's literally smoke coming up in this picture from the chimney. Um, uh, but again, it kind of like, I like how the house is overwhelmed by the surrounding nature. Mm -hmm. So it's overwhelmed by the oh, yellow definitely. field. Yes. It's overwhelmed by this giant sky. Yeah. Uh -huh. Again, the sun looks overexposed and very powerful and, yes. and resonant. And uh, this one is, now I'm not too sure where yeah, we sure. are. Yeah, sure. No, this is called Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come. This is the, this is yep. the last. And it's interesting looking at these two because um, I, can, I used to be really afraid of color. I used to just do a lot of black and white work, mm -hmm. did a lot of pencil sketches. And now that I'm looking at all of these pieces together, uh, I, I can see how really colorful they all are. Oh, they're very uh, colorful. And so yes. we've just gone from something very you know, rich and yellow and green, and now we're over here into oranges and purples. And, um, and so, yeah, it's like I'm really happy that I've kind of gotten into this exploration of, of rich colors mm -hmm. how it's become really important to me and I think it also maybe is like when you when you're younger like there's like this idea like like we're interested in I don't know if this is really true but we're interested in simplified images like cartoons and big giant mm -hmm. blocks of color uh, and and so I kind of feel like all this work has taken me back to where I came from right it took me back to where I grew up and um, where I didn't even really appreciate where I came from at the time no, that I was we, growing no, up. No, and I so I, it's like an exploration for me of like having the, the, the importance of where I came from kind of revealed to me. Well, yes, well, you're sort of going back to that and appreciating it now as opposed to when you were a child, you wanted to just leave, get out of there and go to wherever that's right, the, I wanted to go know, to the city and get out of oh, the nature. Yes, well, of course. Now, you have this show coming up, yes. and uh, could you tell us again where it is, the location? And Sure. It is um, the show, it's a solo show, it's my third solo in three years, uh, and it is uh, located at Muse Gallery. Now, Muse Gallery is at Young in Summerhill. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful gallery, and uh, it's located at 1230 Young Street. Uh, and uh, so it's June 17th, which is next Friday. Next Friday. Fantastic. And the show, uh, Jay airs um, or runs for three weeks. For three weeks. Fantastic. And now you also have a website. You can go to uh, check out all of my work at stephenhall.com. And I spell my name very specifically, S-T-E-V apostrophe N-N. That's Stephen. Uh, but my website, you just have to take the apostrophe out. So there it is, yeah, perfect. Okay, and also uh, your images are at uh, Muse Gallery. Yes. Dot ca. That's right. Thank you. And uh, you you also have a piece in Edward Day. Yes, I have some pieces at Edward Day. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which is really wonderful. Oh, fantastic! And it yeah, is. and yeah. a number of pieces. I have pieces in Ottawa, the Terence Robert Gallery. Uh, I have pieces in Vancouver at the Elliot Lewis Gallery. So, uh, yeah, there's a number of, of pieces around Canada. So that Canada. people just need to look up your name on the website and they'll see all the different galleries that That's right. represent and you. They can yeah. also find that information uh, on my website under mm -hmm. exhibitions. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, thanks so much for coming in. Thank it was you. A, yeah, it was a lot of fun having you. And uh, good night, everybody, and thank you for joining us.